I forgot a very important question. I actually wanted to ask you at the start. So I'm a big yeah. Philly sports guy and I go to Philly a lot. So did you get a cheesesteak and where did you get the cheesesteak from? If you got one, dude, so they get, yeah, we, we had a host hotel. So like all the players and anyone associated with it was staying in this hotel and mm. um gap sent us uh a philly cheesesteak food truck literally parked it in front of oh the, good, okay in front of the hotel and they paid for everything and so if you were a part of the tournament you go out there you say you know i'm ricky riley and they would give you a cheesesteak dude nice i didn't get one <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I, dude! I just you're gonna I have to go no back interest. next year now. Oh, dude, really? I, it it was right there in front of my face, and I was like, "Nah, I'd rather go to dinner." And <sighs> I just in the moment, I wanted nothing to do with it. And looking back at it, like driving home, I'm like, "Why did I not get a Philly cheesesteak, man?" Like I was in Philly, <laughs> like I just didn't think about it. And yeah, everyone yeah. was like, everyone was loving them, dude. So. To this day, I have not had a Philly cheesesteak in Philly. I've had one here, but obviously that's not even close yeah, to the yeah. same. Um, but next time I'm in Philly, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna. Do you have any recommendations? Is, uh, do you have a? You gotta go to Delasandros. Not Del uh, It's not a like everyone like touristy goes to Pats or Geno's, and they're just okay. they're not like they're the tourist spot. You know, like Delasandros sure. is that more authentic. Um, there's a Del course Sandros, like a block it? from Delosandros too. That's like, it's not private, but it's like right in the city, um, which is Perfect. cool. I've never played that course, but it's right there. Um, uh, but that's the spot that like the, the like pro athletes, they're all rave about Delosandros. Like that's one of the, the more local insider info. Good to know, dude. But I'm going to hit them up next Del year. Del next year it's, it's, when you're at the gap, you hear this. check them out. Del Sandro, <laughs> yeah. let's, let's, let's get some sponsorship going. Send the boys some Philly cheesesteaks, would you? Let's go. Yeah, yeah. Let's do this. Because this guy <laughs> with two thumbs decided to be a moron and didn't eat a free <laughs> Philly cheesesteak in Philly. So shout out to this moron. But yeah, help me out. Give me the ex Philly cheesesteak experience next time we're there. Let's do it. <laughs> so. To wrap things up, what are uh, you have some goals set kind of for like you have one more event here in December, but just going into 2025, like what are what are some goals you've kind of set for yourself for that season? Yeah, um, I've been thinking about it pretty mild, mildly um, just because of how fast it's changing. But I would say one goal is definitely to finish top 10 in a tournament. And I think that's that's in the green right and and when yeah. i say in the green i mean definitely possible um yeah. you've been damn close you know, uh, dude uh, so many times have, i've been close you know yeah. like 11th 11th and 12th so it's like it's right there so you know but that's golf so um finish top 10 um when sh a short stature um category that there's actually another short stature player there and, uh, and then what else? Um, just, oh, uh, next year, uh, the biggest one is qualify for the U S adaptive open again. Um, I'll have to do that. Um, so that'll be the biggest one going into 2025. That'll be my focus and kind of motivation to get in the high horse earlier. Right. Because yeah, my qualifier was in May. So you know, that's obviously a lot of work put in and simulators and the golf dome and stuff yeah. like that because you just can't get out. I mean, I think my course opened a week before Indianapolis qualifier. So, mm -hmm. like, I got out there as much as I could, but it's like, you know, what what are you really, what are you really gaining from a week? So... Um, that'll be a big motiv motivation factor going over the winter and stuff because I've seen it. You know, it's like when the dog finally gets the bone and then you wave the other one in front of it, it'll do anything for that fucking bone. So I want to, uh, I want to really make sure I, I get back there and qualify. But dude, the more I think about it, like 
Qual- qualifying is so scary because you have one chance, one chance. Yeah. That's it. And I'm starting to get in this habit of like, oh, like I'll make it up tomorrow or I'll make it up on the second day or the third day or whatever. Can't do that in qualifying. So I was, yeah. you know, super blessed to be able to play so well in the in the indie qualifier, especially with everything that was going on, because usually stuff like that kind of messes with me. With the whole, I was supposed to go off at nine something, didn't go off to one forty five. All That's that right. stayed yeah, I with forgot it. about all that. Then got delayed a, a whole day. Had to putt on sixteen, play two more holes, and say you know whatever. But um, dude, I was listening to that episode the other day uh, that we did after Indianapolis. Dude, great, great episode. That was a great time. Um, but um, so yeah, like that's that's a scary, not scary, but that it's, might have been like intimidating thought. You know? Yeah. Do you think that was probably your toughest round of the season, like of all of them, because like it was such tight criteria you had to meet to qualify, but then also just because of the weather and it getting stretched out like that, like. Yeah, um, I would say either that or the third round of the Adaptive Open was probably my toughest and most like wanting wanting to do well. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. definitely the qualifier actually because of what was behind it, right? Like third day of the yeah. Adaptive Open, like I I really wanted to play well and I struggled a little bit and I pulled it back and whatever, but the the qualifier was like if you don't play well you're you're not gonna sniff anything you know you're you're not even gonna see it yeah. so um and now that i saw it i'm like i want to get back and and next yeah. year's course now is you know Delaware. yeah well now you know that once you get there you know what to expect and all that you, you know exactly exactly so you, the, you the you've had another out. you've had like those other what four competitive adaptive golf rounds since then? Plus, you're going to be in Scottsdale. Like you're you're already building on those competitive yeah, rounds for too, sure. So it's for sure. And um, you know the first tee nerves get get a little better every time. But yeah, you know it's uh, it'll be good. It'll be great. I, I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing the list of um, the qualifying sites for 2025 yeah. because you know i want to start kind of scoping out those courses and and playing in that i'd love if i could go back to indianapolis but i d- i doubt they would do that um yeah but well, you probably move we'll, locations um, we'll see so um yeah biggest goal of 2025 is to qualify um for the adaptive mode awesome well I'm sure we're going to have you on again, probably before the end of the year after Scottsdale. And then we'll be with touching base. When we had Amanda on a couple of weeks ago, we talked about even doing a, um, oh, a little preview before the, uh, the adaptive open and get yeah, like a, little, a group episode type of thing would be yeah, pretty cool. a little mix pod. Oh, I'd love that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'd love that. Let's fun. do it. That'd be a, that'd be a fire episode. That'd be so sick. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. um, yeah, dude, really appreciate you having me on. Um, shout out Gary for not making this. <laughs> you know, let's get a screw you, Gary, in the chat. Just kidding. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, dude, thank you, and it's always great to kind of talk about it. And um, congrats to you guys for everything you're doing. I mean, you guys are getting some as as people will see in the next few weeks the names that are coming out, and um, to get Amanda is yeah. is huge because she's she's yeah, an absolute. Star. That was a fun time. Sure. That was that yeah. was a really good find by you guys, and the fact that she wanted to come on and and stuff should be more than an honor to you guys. So everything you guys For are sure, doing yeah. is, is truly truly awesome, and I appreciate you guys having me on. Oh yeah, we appreciate it, and we always love having you come on. You're up there in the ranks, like I said. You're you're up there at like we get Bud on Bud Copeland for all the majors, yeah. and you're right there with him now, and the the, the high recurring guest. <laughs> coming awesome. for him awesome. alright that's another episode in the wraps thanks again to Ricky for joining us and we'll see you all next Thursday thanks for watching today's episode to see more of our content be sure to follow us on Instagram, TikTok and subscribe on YouTube we can be found at Basic Bogies on all platforms thanks we hope to see you on the next one